million dollars richer if not keep playing all right most watched most trusted grateful you spend the evening with us good night from washington i'm shannon breen a rare winter system that hit the southeast and is now moving up the east coast threatening new england with the system forecasters are calling a quote bomb cyclone we're asking people to stay off the roads as best you can president trump's former chief strategist steve bannon under fire tonight from President Trump. Furious, disgusted would probably certainly fit when you uh, make such outrageous claims and completely false claims against the president. The Powerball jackpot has swelled up to a whopping $460 million. Gotta play to win. Good morning to you. There is a live shot from Rondacoma, New York, where the snow is starting to settle. You can see a little dusting there on the ground. Boy, do we have a lot of news to get to you this morning. It's 4 a.m., but things are already happening. You're watching Fox and Friends first. And we appreciate it. I'm Heather Childers. Let's get right to that Fox News alert for you, though. A monster winter storm barreling up the East Coast right now, unleashing snow ice and hurricane force winds. The Sunshine State looking a lot more like a winter wonderland with snow falling in Tallahassee. And that's for the first time in almost 30 years. The brutal below freezing temperatures. Look at that turning water fountains into icicles, ice statues. And that same system now setting its sights on the northeast. Over a dozen states now under a blizzard warning and the forecast just got worse. Live Fox News team coverage for you. First, though, let's get straight to Janice Dean, who is tracking the very latest. Good morning, Janice. What is going on? Heather, we haven't seen the snowflakes here in New York City, but it is coming. And remember yesterday I was talking about, okay, this storm actually might wobble a little bit towards the west, which would mean more snowfall totals and the possibility of a blizzard for more people. Well, that forecast happened yesterday. And we are expecting, I mean, a good indication really from the Del Marva all the way up to Maine, five to eight inches. In some cases, we could get over a foot depending on where you live. And then the blizzard conditions are also going to kick in later on this afternoon. And that means winds in excess of 35 miles per hour for a duration of at least three hours. So people are urged, if you can stay at home today, it's best to do so, especially if you live along the coast, the I-95 corridor, and a lot of schools are closed. Now, the temperatures are cold enough for snow. And as you can see, that snow is creeping in on the New York City area up towards Long Island. Long Island under a blizzard warning, as is Boston, as is coastal New Jersey, up towards Connecticut and Maine. And that is going to be, unfortunately, the case throughout the day today. And again, it's going to be a daytime storm. So people are urged to stay off the roadways. We saw what happened in places like Buffalo when you have a few inches of snow on the pavement. And people just don't know how to drive, unfortunately. So just essential workers need to be out there. We want to make sure that our first responders have a clear path if they need to be out there. So you can see the snow. It is starting to wind up. This is a very powerful system. I'm sure you've heard bombogenesis. We've been talking about that. It's a meteorological term that says the pressure is going to drop 24 millibars within 24 hours, and that actually might double. So a very powerful system. Blizzard warnings in effect for millions of folks, really, from the Delmarva all the way up to Maine, including the city of Boston. Boston. And here's the forecast radar. As you can see, Heather, I think we're going to see in excess of eight inches here in the New York City area. Some places could easily see 12 to 18 inches. So listen to your local forecasters. And of course, we will keep you up to date. I'm going to be busy here on the plaza. I expect the snow to fly within the hour, my oh, friend. Wow. Back to you. Wow. All right. We'll just stay inside all day long and watch Janice Dean. <laughs> That's, That's what people right. should do. I'll be doing it for you. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Janice. Okay. Appreciate it. Important to have her with us this morning. Well, millions, as you can imagine, are now bracing for the worst of that monster storm as it gains steam. These pictures are just amazing. Uh, Todd Pyro picks up our team coverage for you now. He is live up in Long Island where snow is already falling, apparently. Good morning, Todd. How you doing? Good morning to you, Heather. Yeah, the snow is already falling here in Islip. This is in Suffolk County, and if you've heard any news report local here in the New York metro area, it says Suffolk County is going to get hit and hit hard. That's the bad news. The good news, not too bad right now. You can see some cars getting an early start on their day. You can still see blacktop. So, so far, so good here. But again, this is very, very early on in the snow. It started snowing here about two hours ago. What makes the storm so unique is a few things. One, it's going to be 
really cold. It's going to be really windy. But you, like you heard Janice mention, it really is the coastal impact of this storm. Starting off in Florida, people go to Florida this time of year to get out of what we're getting hit with right now in the Northeast. But they did get hit, albeit to a lesser degree, there in Florida. Then there's Georgia. You have heard over the years of Georgia getting hit with snow. A number of my friends in Atlanta say, oh, when it snows an inch here, the city shuts down. Well, Georgia also got hit. The focus right now is definitely this part of the Northeast, the New York metro area. Uh, you can see the preps going on in the New York metro area. And then Boston, the big concern at this point for folks in Boston is that this is going to make its way up there and also be very impactful for them. But again, folks here in the Northeast, we're somewhat used to this, albeit maybe not necessarily the hurricane-like winds that we've heard people talking about. Heather, back to you. Yeah, well, stay warm. Try to out there. Don Jr. like an <laughs> I was egg people say on that to national me if I'm covering TV. Outside, the but White I mean House it responding with a blistering statement saying when he was fired, he was he not only lost his job, he lost his mind. Steve had very little to do with our historic victory, which was delivered by the forgotten men and women of this country. Steve doesn't represent my base. He's only in it for himself. Steve Bannon continuing weighing in on the feud on a Breitbart satellite radio program last night. The president of the United States is a great man. You know, I support him day in and day out, whether going through the country, given the Trump miracle speech or on the show or on the website. So I don't think you have to worry about that, but I appreciate the kind words. Uh, but the words are anything but kind. Perhaps the harshest words directed in this book soon to be released is at Donald Trump Jr., who responded to Steve Bannon last night, tweeting, quote, Steve had the honor of working in the White House and serving the country. Unfortunately, he squandered that privilege and turned that opportunity into a nightmare of backstabbing, harassing, leaking, lying, and undermining the president. Steve is not a strategist. He is an opportunist. So the letter is out. Cease and desist. Bannon continuing to talk out. We'll see if this continues today. Not sure what this serves, but it is certainly something uh, to watch today. Mm. All right. Griff Jenkins live for us this morning. Thank you, Griff. Appreciate it. Well, in just hours from now, moving to some actual work getting done, President Trump will sit down with Senate Republicans to discuss DACA and border security. Pairing the two could be critical. We've talked about that in order to pass a government spending package by the January 19th deadline. But Congress has a March 5th deadline to strike a deal on DACA, which protects nearly 700,000 young immigrants known as Dreamers from being deported. Now, President Trump has said that he will not sign a deal unless it includes funding for his border wall. But Sarah Huckabee Sanders says that the GOP is willing to work with Democrats. Look, we'd like to make uh, a deal on securing funding for the border wall, as well as ending chain migration, ending the visa lottery program, interior enforcements. We'd like to do that right away. So if the Democrats are willing to sit down and make that deal, uh, I think we'd be happy to get that done by the end of the month. Well, this as three ex-Homeland Security chiefs write an open letter urging Congress to include DACA in the January spending bill. So we'll see what happens on that. But here's something that happened overnight. The House Intelligence Committee announcing a deal with the Department of Justice finally to turn over subpoena documents related to the anti-Trump dossier. A Chairman Devin Nunes saying that they will be turned over in the coming days after threatening to hold the DOJ and the FBI in contempt. Now, this announcement coming just hours after FBI Director Christopher Wray and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein met with House Speaker Paul Ryan. It was in a closed door meeting. The FBI has been accused of anti-Trump bias. You know about that by top agents during the Hillary Clinton and Russia investigation. So we'll keep an eye on that for you today as well. And Paul Manafort is fighting back against special counsel Robert Mueller and his Russia probe. Uh, President Trump's former campaign chairman filing a lawsuit claiming that the investigation has gone too far. Now Manafort, who was indicted on money laundering charges along with his deputy, Rick Gates, says that he was wrongly charged and that Mueller overstepped his boundaries since the alleged crimes happened years before the 2016 election. Both Manafort and Gates have pleaded not guilty. 
And switching gears, the Powerball jackpot surging overnight to more than half a million dollars after another drawing yields no winner. Now, the grand prize is now at an estimated $550 million, which would be the eighth largest lottery prize ever. And the next drawing will be Saturday, just so you know. Uh, the $418 million Mega Millions drawing will happen tomorrow, though. Combined, the game sit at a record-setting $968 million. And who couldn't use that? <laughs> well, the time now is about 11 minutes after the top of the hour. North Korea, Iran, Pakistan, all put on notice by President Trump. How will the world react now that America is no longer leading from behind? Why, our next guest says that how the president handles these rogue regimes is just as important as defeating ISIS. And fuel pump freak out. The drivers going into meltdown mode over having to pump their own gas. And here's a live look. This is from Maryland where the snow is coming down. Look at that. We're going to continue to monitor the weather for you throughout this storm. What are they calling it? The bomb cyclone as it continues to develop up the East Coast. Stay with us. Good morning. You are watching Fox and Friends First. And if you're anywhere, basically all along the East Coast, it is time to bundle up. If you can, stay inside the bomb cyclone. You can see it there on the map. Actually looks like it. Developing as it continues to move up the East Coast. Extremely cold temperatures, snow and ice predicted throughout this entire area. We will stay on top of it for you. We have Janice Dean with us here this morning, and she'll bring us the very latest throughout this hour and the next hour of Fox and Friends First. So stay with us. And, you know, related to that, this bone-chilling cold and winter weather sweeping across much of the nation, it's responsible for derailing an Amtrak train carrying 300 people overnight. A frozen switch caused three cars apparently to slip off the tracks while pulling into a Savannah, Georgia train station. Now, the train was able to continue on to New York City, wreaking havoc already. And the Coast Guard searching for a plane that mysteriously vanished over the Gulf of Mexico. The single engine plane took off from Wiley Post Airport in Oklahoma City. It was bound for another small airport near Austin, but never made it. Now, this eerie flight path shows the plane heading past where it was supposed to land in Texas and then straight out over the water. And that's when the pilot stopped responding to air traffic control. How about some foreign policy now? President Trump is putting rogue regimes on notice, calling, on, calling out North Korea, Pakistan, and Iran within the span of just one week, the beginning of the new year. But it's more than tough talk because the administration is getting ready to take some action. So what kind of message is this sending to the rest of the world? Here now to weigh in is National Security and Military Analyst Dr. Rebecca Grant. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Good morning, Heather. So what a way to start the new year. I mean, it, foreign policy front and center for sure for this administration. Uh, and you say that the way the president and this administration responds to these issues, Iran specifically, is just as important as to how they've dealt with ISIS. Right, Heather, because we're moving into the next chapter. And what I see here is President Trump could spend all day working these foreign policy crises. What he's done is he's put each of these nations on notice in a different way. He's not risk averse in the way that Obama was. Trump calculates the risk and he's willing to look for a better deal. Obama didn't necessarily see options, but Trump always wants to see a new angle. Yeah, we constantly heard with uh, President Obama's administration this issue of leading from behind. Very clear that President Trump is going to do the exact opposite it, uh, specifically with what he's dealing with in terms of Iran. Let's take a look at one of his latest tweets on Iran. He said, such respect for the people of Iran as they try to take back their government or their corrupt government. You will see great support from the United States at the appropriate time. So what do you think that means? I love it. Once again, he's being correct, but he's also being cautious. So he wants the people of Iran to know that we remember their tremendous culture, that they have a bright future, but he's really putting the mullahs on notice as well. But he's not overstepping the bounds. He's not making any threats. He's letting events in Iran unfold, but knowing that the U.S. and other nations around the world support a better future for Iran at some mm -hmm. point in time. Now, Iran, you know, is the Walmart for terrorists. So don't forget 
forget that Iran is in a little cold war with Saudi Arabia. And we also see our U.S. forces facing Iranian-made equipment on the battlefield. Uh, back this summer, one of our pilots had to shoot down an Iranian drone that had attacked our forces in Syria. Mm -hmm. So Iran is a real problem, and their reach for ascendancy in the Middle East is something that Trump is determined to head off. Yeah, something else, uh, another area that's been a problem with terrorists. I mean, Osama bin Laden was hiding out there. Pakistan, the president has said that he is going to cancel the security assistance to Pakistan. Uh, what's your thoughts on how he's dealing with that? This is another very careful tweet. Read every word. He's put them on notice, but as we know, we do have a good quiet relationship with the military of Pakistan. We could not do those operations in Afghanistan without some of the logistics and other assistance that comes through Pakistan. That said, Trump's Afghanistan strategy won't succeed if Taliban, ISIS, and others can go across that mountain border mm -hmm. into Pakistan. He wants Pakistan to clamp down on that border. He is positioning for a better deal in the U.S. relations with Pakistan. Much more to come with yeah. Pakistan. All right, Dr. Grant, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. We didn't even have time to get to North Korea. So much on the plate already for the new year. Appreciate your insight as always. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Well, the time now is about 20 minutes after the top of the hour. An ISIS terrorist taunting America in our own backyard as New York City steps up security measures. Why? Former NYPD Commissioner Bernard Kirk says that the time for profiling is now. It's like he'll blow the whole world up so he that his stupid sons don't have to go to jail. Will President Trump start a war with North Korea to avoid his sons from going to jail? Joy Behar seems to think so, and social media is sounding off. Carly Shimkus is here with that reaction online. Good morning. Welcome back to Fox and Friends First. Social media exploding over the war of words between President Trump and his former chief strategist, Republicans rushing to the president's side as the left claims that Steve Bannon is their new champion. Go figure. Carly Shimkus with Fox News Headlines 24-7 Series XM 115 is here with the reaction online. Wow. Good morning. Yeah, Good wow. In morning. a word. <laughs> yeah, Steve Bannon's comments attacking President Trump's own children and the president's response sent shockwaves across social media yesterday, but it looks like no one is enjoying this feud more than Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, whose team sent out this gif of his smiling face. Check that out. They sent that out shortly after the president issued his response. Now, it's no secret that Bannon and McConnell don't get along. Bannon even vowing to remove McConnell as Senate Majority Leader. There is so much more reaction coming in on this story. Uh, Trump supporter Bill Mitchell tweeted this. My response is, no one voted for Bannon. The guy I voted for is delivering in spades for me. The rest is noise. Another uh, Twitter user writes, but looking like this author is not credible. The Trump train needs to put a stop to the left trying to divide us. Uh, speaking of the left, some in the Democratic Party are embracing what Bannon had to say, like Senator Mark Warner, who tweeted, look, I don't often agree with Steve Bannon, but we should be able to agree that if a foreign adversary approaches you with dirt on a political opponent, any true patriot, would alert the FBI immediately. Yeah, this is That's big, bad. and it's going to continue to unfold today, yes, I am sure. Absolutely. All right, so uh, Joy Behar. She always has something to say. Yeah, the ladies <laughs> on The View attacked President Trump yesterday. Can you believe it? D listen to Joy Behar trying to tie uh, President Trump's tweets on North Korea to the Russia investigation. Take a listen. My feeling is that probably they're getting closer to him in the Mueller investigation. And that's what this is about, a lot of it. It's like he'll blow the whole world up so he that his stupid sons don't have to go to jail. Okay, so that's what she has to say about that. Laura, though, says, I can't believe anyone watches the show. A very similar tweet coming in from Maureen, who says, why do people watch this ridiculously uninformed program? Yikes. Yeah, I wonder if she knows that there's not actually a button. Yes, well, yeah, yeah I know. No, no big red button, but yes. Whoopi Goldberg has right. one, apparently. So, so uh, in Oregon... You now have to pump your own gas, yes. and people aren't happy about no, it. No, not at all. So 2018 marked a historic change for the state. Uh, in, uh, residents living in rural st um, areas, rural communities, don't have to pump their um, 
own gas anymore, or rather they uh, they do. They could pump their own gas. I'm so sorry about that. This causing a whole lot of controversy on social media. Uh, one person from Oregon wrote on Facebook saying, I've lived in this state all my life and I refuse to pump my own gas. I had to do it once in California while visiting my brother and almost died <laughs> doing it. This is a service only qualified uh, person should be performing this duty. I will literally park at the pump and wait until someone pumps my gas. I can't even <laughs> when you end something with I can't even, you yeah, know, they're it's serious. serious. Well, I was saying, I don't even think I've ever been to a station where so, I didn't have to well, pump so my own I gas. I grew up in New Jersey, and so all I've ever done was um, have somebody pump my gas for me. So yeah. I agree with my kids. It's pretty serious <laughs> stuff. I don't know what Amazing. to do. Amazing. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Well, the time now is about uh, half past the top of the hour. And uh, Steve Bannon, as Carly was just talking about, trying to smooth things over after calling President Trump's children traitors. The President of the United States is a great man. You know, I support him day in and day out. So, what is the former chief strategist trying to accomplish by turning his back on the man, or at least his children, that he helped elect? Well, our next guest says that credibility is key here. And a massive winter storm it continues to barrel up the East Coast right now, bringing snow and ice. We'll have live Fox News team coverage up next. Welcome back to Fox and Friends First. 431 here on the East Coast, and we have this Fox News alert for you right now. Millions of people in the path of a dangerous winter storm, a monster storm roaring up the East Coast at the powerful system packed with ice, snow, and hurricane force winds over a dozen states under a blizzard warning. And the time to prepare is now over. Too late. We have got team coverage for you. Let's get straight to Janice Dean with the very latest on the path. Good morning, Janice. Hi, Heather. And we are seeing the first snowflakes here in New York City. It is happening. And it's going to start to come down now in earnest. We're going to see, you know, in some cases, especially on Long Island, a couple of inches of snow an hour. And we have blizzard warnings really up from the Delmarva towards Maine, meaning that we're going to see conditions go downhill starting now throughout the day today. So this is a daytime storm. Uh, officials along the coast are saying stay inside. No school for millions of kids uh, today. And if you're not an essential worker, don't be on the roadways. Take a look at this. We have low visibility across portions of of Maryland and Delaware up towards New Jersey and then um, certainly we're going to see the potential for blizzard conditions here in New York City later on today. There's the track of the storm. The one thing we have going for us is that it's going to be a quick mover relatively speaking but so much energy that we could certainly see in some cases over 12 maybe 18 inches of snow once all is said and done. So by this time tomorrow it won't be falling from the sky but the cold air will be in place and the snow is really not going to go anywhere. So that's the problem. We're going to see the potential for a lot of power outages, Heather, all up and down the coast. And then we're going to be dealing with sub-zero temperatures heading into the weekend. So that's my big concern once the storm is over, is that people without power need to know what they're going to do, where to keep warm. But there's a look at some of the snow totals. In some cases, we, you know, we could get upwards of 18 inches, especially along the coast and where we have the blizzard warnings. Back to you. Man, oh man. Yeah, and, and that's a good point. People need power to stay warm. Absolutely. That is very dangerous. Although the snow can be fun and pretty, got to pay attention to that. Thank yep. you so much, Janice. Of course. Well, the monster storm is expected, as Janice was saying, to bring more than a foot of snow in some places. Look at these snow plows right there. It's crazy. Uh, making travel, of course, difficult, making it dangerous. Laura Engel joins us now and continues our team coverage. She is live outside uh, a train Train station in New York. That is where the snow is already coming down. Good morning. Good morning, Heather, and boy, we're getting some pretty fierce winds whipping around here on our faces. Uh, we're outside the Ronkonkoma train station and for the Long Island Railroad. Uh, this is a huge and major hub that a lot of people are going to be using today. Commuters have been bracing for what is being billed, as you mentioned, a dangerous and difficult, treacherous decision to get on the rail and get on the roads today if you choose to do so. Uh, we are expecting, we've got the actual, the blizzard warning. It just changed over to that on Long Island. 
Island. Uh, Suffolk County could be getting, as Janice mentioned, up to 6 to 12 inches. And let's talk about those plows that you mentioned. Uh, the preps have been underway and in overdrive. Heavy blowing snow will be pummeling the island with fierce winds as it builds into that bomb cyclone we have been hearing about, which will be bringing the severe drop in pressure, hurricane force winds, coastal flooding, sanitation workers all over the place prepping for this. The New York area alone has been seeing the plows and the salt spreaders out in force, over 2,400 being used in New York City alone. Uh, the word of the day is to stay off the roads if you can. Sanitation workers are telling people to be ready. The high winds and very low temperatures means that we're going to be operating in near whiteout conditions likely during part of this storm. Um, it means that we need to move more slowly and more carefully. Uh, it also means that the salt and the calcium chloride is not as effective as it would be if we were 15 degrees warmer. And this winter storm could impact 41 million people from northern Florida to Maine. At least 17 deaths have been caused by the extreme cold. And as we continue to monitor the commuting situation out here, we'll bring you more as we see people braving the elements. Heather. All right. Much like yourself, uh, Laura, I appreciate it very much. You coming in early and covering this for us. Thanks. Thank you. Well, President Trump's lawyer putting Steve Bannon on notice after his bombshell book claims that Donald Trump Jr. committed treason. Now, the war of words between the president and his former chief strategist now heating up. And here to react is New York City Councilman Joe Borelli. Joe, thank you so much for joining us this morning Whoa. on this. So your first initial thoughts yesterday as all this continued to unfold. Well, it was a bit shocking. I'm not yes. going to lie. It was certainly something that caught uh, a lot of people in the Republican Party by surprise. Mm -hmm. I think the first question that we have to ask is whether the author of this book is even credible or not. This is someone whose credibility has been challenged multiple times. Uh, for multiple other things he wrote. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Joe Concha, who, who was uh, very familiar to this audience, was out last night pointing out that President Trump uh, had been, you know, talking about John Boehner uh, for the past seven years. Yeah, and, and that's because, there's, yeah, there's an element in the book where he claims that President Trump didn't even know who John right, right. Boehner was. One of these little sensational tidbits this author is trying to push is that the president didn't even know who the Speaker of the House was. And it's just easily provable uh, and false. Mm -hmm. And then you see this person, uh, this author, trying to be sensational. He He's talking about uh, Jared and Ivanka's pillow talk. I mean, it, it's essentially uh, voyeuristic, if nothing else. Yeah. And if the guy's goal is to sell books, he's doing a great job because we're all talking about it. If the guy's goal is to be truthful, I'm not sure how credible he, yeah, he is. Yeah, and there are people that were quoted in the book who actually who came out yesterday and said, well, I didn't say that. Right, and, and not many books have to have a page in the front of their book mm -hmm. saying that everything else we're writing after this point may not be accurate. That's not something that's typically found in nonfiction books. Uh, I, I think, though, beyond this, though, it, it, you know, the president didn't take this as something that Steve Bannon did not say. He went right on the attack. And in Steve Bannon's sort of uh, backtrack last night on his radio show, yeah. he didn't deny it either. So. Right. He didn't deny it. He said that he still supports the president, although he did come out, I mean, if this happened, and spoke very unkindly about the president's son and his son-in-law. Here's what his son had to say. Uh, this is what Don Jr. tweeted. He said, Steve had the honor of working in the White House and serving the country on Unfortunately, he squandered that privilege and turned that opportunity into a nightmare of backstabbing, harassing, leaking, lying, and undermining the president. Steve is not a strategist. He is an opportunist. And so in the book, you know, Steve Bannon allegedly says that uh, the meeting, this, right. this Russia meeting that happened that include Jared Kushner, Paul Manafort, and Don Jr., that it was unpatriotic and treasonous. Right. Yes. So it's, it's funny because the media has uh, discounted everything Steve Bannon has said in the past, but all of a sudden, now that he's attacking President Trump, he's speaking the gospel. Mm -hmm. uh, but the important thing is, the, the Mueller team has been investigating this meeting. I don't think there's any, ever been any one meeting that has been looked into by the media and investigators as much as this meeting, mm -hmm. and yet there's still no evidence of collusion or any criminal activity. Yeah. So despite what Steve Bannon says, whether it's accurate or not, it's just not there. And the charges that involved uh, Paul Manafort and his deputy, right, mm -hmm. they were actually things that happened back in the Obama administration. Right. Well, we, we certainly see the, the Mueller team uh, extending their reach and going after every little tidbit but they can find. And again, they still found nothing about uh, uh, Don Jr. Right. And I think Don Jr., he really made a good point uh, with uh, his, uh, the, the, the end of his tweet. He actually said that if you look at even Breitbart's comments about this latest feud between uh, Bannon and Trump, Breitbart's uh, own viewers are taking Donald Trump's side.